Well, today's Coffee and a Chat is brought to you by my friend, Larcy. That's right, Larcy, you're today's lucky sponsor. <laughs> I don't know. I it, This has gotten funny to me, but when somebody blesses me, I just kind of... <laughs> I want I want you to know they blessed me by letting them be the sponsor of today's show. I don't know. So anyway, Larcy brought me a special gift the other day. And, and again, timing was perfect because I just told the Lord that I needed some black licorice. I hadn't had any in a while and I was needing some and I mean needing it. So here's the thing with black licorice. Not I'm not talking the artificial flavor, but I'm talking about the extract from the, the licorice root, okay? It's very medicinal. Very medicinal. And I'm hoping to grow my own one day so I can make my own when I need it. But for now, don't have it. So you can buy candy though that is made with the actual uh, licorice extract. And so I went through menopause a long time ago. And that's right, guys, this is going to be too much information. It's not going to be what you want to hear. So just do that for a moment, okay? Because this is me and I'm going to tell you anyway. So when I went through menopause, I thought, that's it, right? You go through it, and it's done, it's over, and you don't deal with it anymore. My hair is bugging me today. I don't know. I, I need to get it up on my head and get it off of me. But anyway, that's a whole nother thing. See, I, I, I bird dog all the time, my husband says. So, it was a couple years after I'd been through menopause, and I started having these hot flashes. So I said something to my mom. I go, I don't understand what's going on. You know, I've already been through menopause. It, it, it I've been, I'm, I'm a couple of years out from it. What is with the hot flashes? And she's like, well, honey, let me tell you. Menopause never really goes away. It comes back ever so often for a visit. And sadly, my mother was correct. So menopause comes back for visits sometimes. And I'm telling you, if you've been through it, you know. You can be very miserable. There are a lot of little things that happen. There's the hot flashes and the night sweats. There's the, where it feels like there's little bugs crawling all over your skin. And oh my word, it is miserable. Sleepless nights, racing thoughts. Yeah, no wonder people used to think women were crazy going through that because you feel crazy. So anyway, some women go through it and I guess it's no big deal, but I notice it. So anyway, Larcy showed up with all this black licorice. And so I'm like, oh, yay. So because of that, I am making her the sponsor of today's story, which is a good story for her to be sponsor of. And you'll know why in a minute. All right. So when my husband and I got married, I relocated to live with him because it seemed like a good idea that I should live with my husband, right? And that meant traveling about 3,000 miles. So I didn't know anybody here. I didn't know my way around. We've been married for over nine years and I still don't always know my way around. And I still don't know everybody here, but we're making progress. I know enough, so enough to get myself in trouble. Okay, so he uh, was introducing me to different women that he thought would be good friends for me because he didn't want me to be lonely. He, you know, he didn't want, he, he knew I must need a friend. And so one woman that he introduced me to, she died. So that didn't work out. Another one, I don't think she liked me. <laughs> and yeah, and there were some others that kind of wanted to go do some things that were not something I was going to go do. So nothing worked out, okay? And he was he was distraught that here I was and I, and I didn't have any friends and stuff. And I just told him, I, you know, one day I said, look, don't worry about it. God will take care of it. You know, I couldn't find a, a decent husband either, but when I gave it to God, he brought me you. So let's just let him work that out. He'll bring me a friend. If I need a friend, he's got somebody for me. Well, 
we had a project we were working on in our house and we needed some help with it. And so a friend of ours, he came and, and helped us with the project. And it was, it was a, a couple of days worth of, of work that we needed help with. And, and he was here every day and we, we enjoyed spending the time with him and all, but when everything was said and done, Marvin had asked him, what can I, you know, can I, what can I do for you? Can I pay you or something? You know, you took all this time to come help us and you didn't have to do that. And the guy's like, no, 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 I don't want anything. Well, yeah, I do want one thing. You know what? He goes, because we have uh, uh, quite a bit of woods here on our on our land, and we produce firewood for ourselves, and, and uh, when we have it, we sell some too. And so he goes, you guys produce your own firewood. You got wood here. I've got, I've got this woman from my church. I call her Mama Shirley. She just lives down the road here. And Marvin goes, oh, you mean Shirley so-and-so? And he goes, yeah, you know her? And Marvin's like, oh, yeah, I've known her for, you know, forever. Yeah, I know her. I know her really well. And he goes, does she need wood? And he goes, well, she has a wood stove. And, yeah, she she could use some firewood. So if you if you could take her a load of firewood, he goes, that's all I want from you. And Marvin goes, no problem. Yeah, absolutely. He goes, we'll go down. I'll talk to her. I'll find out what she needs, where she needs it, and we'll, we'll take care of it. So I think it was the next day that he's like, come on, get in the car. Let's go down here and talk to Mama Shirley. So I'm like, okay. So we just drive just not very far down the road here. And, and he pulls up to this woman's house and, and, uh, he's getting out of the car to walk around to open the door for me because yes, ladies, yes, my husband opens the doors for me. It's very nice. I have to, I have to pretend I'm a lady, you know, <laughs> when he treats me like one. So maybe that's why he does it. <laughs> But anyhow, no, he's a, he, I am married to a, a very proper gentleman, very kind, generous man. So anyway, he was walking around to open my door for me. And this woman comes flying out her back door and she's like, oh, Marvin, rah, 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 and starts giving him a hard time. And he's just rah, 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 right back at her. And that's the way they are still. I mean, uh, but but it's funny. And I just, I'm watching her give him a hard time and, and him give her one back. And I'm like, I don't know this woman, but I'm in love with her already. <laughs> you know, this is, this is great. And so he lets me out of the car finally and, and introduces us and we go into the house and, and her daughter is Larcy and Larcy was there that day. So I met her too. And so Mama Shirley and I started talking and, you know, because she wanted to know everything about me since, you know, you know, old Marvin went out and got married, huh? And so she wanted, you know, I'm sure she wanted to make sure that it was a decent person. I don't know. But we hit it off. And she's like, oh, I want you to come back and let's, would you come back and we can just spend some time, you know, we can pray together and just talk and get to know each other. I'm like, absolutely. So it's a date. And so we set up a time and I went back and we have, have been great friends ever since. And she is, she's not just my mama Shirley or this other guy. I mean, this woman has so many people that call her mama Shirley. I asked her one day, do you know how many? And she's like, Oh, I have no idea. And we're all her children. Let me tell you, she's only like, I think 14 years older than I am. So she would have been a very young mama, but, um, she, she is my friend. When I need a mother, she's my mother. When I need a sister, she's my sister. I mean, she's just handpicked by God, the, the right person for me. And so that's what I, why I wanted to tell this story today is because one, I love my mama, Shirley. And if she's watching and I'm sure she is, she knows I love her and I thank God for her. She is such a huge blessing and a huge part of my story. I, uh, but I wanted to share this today because I believe that God had her pre-picked for me as a friend just as much as I believe he had picked Marvin for me as a husband. That these are God-ordained relationships. I have no doubt about that at all in my mind. And so I've got some, some friends and some family members going through some things right now um, where they've got some things they want. And they're trying to make these things happen. And, you know, I mean, as we should, like the, the one today was my friend. She's been, she tried for this job. She's been looking for a job for a while now. And so there was this one and it would have been so, you know, I mean, it looked like the perfect job for her. Um, they called her in for the interview and she really felt she had it. I thought she had it, 
But then today she found out they gave it to somebody else. And I know she's disappointed. And I just, and it just came to me all the times when I've thought this is it. And I've been disappointed, but see, God had something better for me. And I told her, you know what? God just had to get this job out of the way so they can bring you the better one that he has, you know, picked for you. And so, and I don't know, if she, you know, how she feels about that right now. Probably today she's just probably bummed because she didn't get that job and she was really, really hoping that she had. But God has something better for her, something more perfect for her, something that he's chose for her. And in my life, whenever I've tried to make something happen or help God out, it's not turned out very good. It ends up being regret. Just a pile of regrets. But when I've turned something over to the Lord, like my husband, finding a husband, finding a friend, he always comes through in the most perfect way. So my husband was talking about this the other day, and he said it's like we create these Ishmaels. And if, if you don't know the story of Ishmael in the Bible, Abraham and Sarah God had told them they, they, were, they didn't have any children. They hadn't had children. They were getting up there in years. And God told them that he was going to give them a child and that he was going to bless the whole world through the child and its offspring and everything. But she didn't get pregnant. She didn't get pregnant. And so finally there's like, maybe we need to kind of help God out. And so Sarah took one of her maids and said, here, we'll make her your wife too. And, and you have a baby with her. And then that's how the Lord will give me this, this child is through her. But see, that's not what God said to do. And she just was getting impatient about waiting. So they had, Abraham had a baby with this woman and a boy, and they named him Ishmael. But he was not the promised child. And there was some heartache that came with Ishmael. There is still heartache that comes in all of that. It was, I think Ishmael was like 13 when Abraham and Sarah did finally have this baby. Now here's the thing. Sarah was 90 years old when she gave birth. Abraham was a hundred. And the year before this, the Lord had come and said, when I come back this time next year, you will have the child will be here. You will have your child. And Sarah was 89. She's like, she laughed. Like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> Uh, an old woman like me is going to have a baby. I don't think so. And then God's like, why did you laugh? She's like, well, I, didn't, I, I, you know, I didn't want to admit that one to God. I didn't laugh. Oh, but you did. So thing is, it doesn't matter how impossible, right? That's from several videos ago. He is the God of the impossible. He does it every day. And when Sarah was 90, she gave birth to Isaac and Isaac gave birth to, you know, well, his wife, Gave, Rebecca gave birth to Jacob and Jacob's name was changed to Israel and he had 12 sons and they became the children of Israel and now they are a nation exactly what God told them they would be but there is a complication because of Ishmael Isaac and Ishmael are still fighting to this day so I don't want to create any more Ishmaels in my life I've created enough and even though I may be disappointed when the answer comes back, no, not this one. This isn't, this isn't for you. It's okay because I've been through enough to know that what God's going to bring me is even better. So I just want to leave that thought with you guys today that if you're looking for something big in your life, I know there's, I, I know a handful of people right now that are trying to get pregnant and some of them are really having some struggles with that. Don't struggle. Just if, if God has a baby for you, you will get pregnant. You will have that child. God's word does not return void. So whatever he has for you, and maybe he has something else for you, it'll be even better. So whatever it is, whatever it is, It's okay to trust God, especially on those big things. I don't want to make any more big decisions on my own. I don't want to be trying to make anything happen big on my own anymore. 
Now I'm going to follow the counsel of God and I'll do what he tells me to do. And I will obey his voice and allow him to bring the Isaacs into my life and rather than me birthing the Ishmaels. So just a little thought today. All right. I love you guys. I appreciate you so much. I love this time that I get to spend with you every day. And if you've not subscribed yet and you enjoy this at all, I would love for you to subscribe, hit the notification bell. So you'll know when the new video comes up tomorrow, because a new one comes up every single day so far for over a month. Now we're on a good run. So, and I've got enough stories to last a lifetime. <laughs> because it has been a lifetime. All right. So um, give me a thumbs up. It encourages me. Leave comments. I love the comments. If you want prayer, you can leave that in the comments. Or if you want to talk to me privately, I try to remember to put my email in the about. Uh, well, no, I'm sorry. I try to leave it in the description for the video. If it's not there, you can go to my page, just hit on that little icon that for coffee and a chat, it will take you to my page and then you go to the about section and it will have my email. All right. I love you guys. You have a great day and I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye.